Wow. Wow, the Atlanta Braves. The Braves just made a huge move. I'm like, I'm shocked. This completely shocked me. I did not have the Braves on my radar at all, but they went out and they signed Marcelo Zuna to a very similar looking contract to the one that Josh Donaldson got last year. One year, $18 million. One of the final big free agents is off the board. It leaves Castellanos and Puig and then pretty much everybody else who cares. I'm like, I'm, I'm shocked. That's not good for a Mets fan. That is not good. The NL East, you got to watch out for the Braves. So going to talk about the Marcelo Zuna signing. Also going to talk about the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot outcomes. As you guys probably know already, Derek Jeter and Larry Walker are the two guys being voted into the Hall of Fame this year by the writers. Congratulations to both of them. They both deserve it. So we'll go over Ozuna. We'll go over the Baseball Hall of Fame stuff. We'll go over any other baseball news that I've been seeing. I mean, Blue Jays got new jerseys as well. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, click that sub button, join the team. Remember to get in the comments down below. Give me your thoughts and opinions. Do you think this move, Marcelo Zuna, the Braves was a good one? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section below. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description. Always talking baseball over there. And if you want to buy any tickets to any sporting events, make sure to head over to SeatGeek. Use the code Giraffe. Save yourself $20 off your first purchase. So we got a Passan bomb. He dropped it on us minutes after the Hall of Fame announcement. But Marcelo Zuna and the Atlanta Braves have come to an agreement. One year, $18 million. Like I said, very similar to the Josh Donaldson contract last year. And I feel like that Donaldson contract has a lot to do with Marcelo Zuna signing with the Braves. He saw Josh Donaldson last year take a one-year deal, take about, what, $18, $20 million? Don't remember the exact deal, but it was pretty similar. He came out, he raked in that lineup. You have so much protection. You have nothing to worry about. They have to throw to somebody. They're not just going to pitch around you like maybe they did in St. Louis sometimes or like they did in Miami. They are going to be coming at you. I'd rather face Marcelo Zuna than Freddie Freeman, Acuna, maybe even Ozzy Albies. They've got an absolutely stacked lineup, and adding Marcelo Zuna to it just makes it even crazier. I can't even believe they got him. Presumably, that means Nick Markakis is now going to be a bench bat for this team. He is not going to be their everyday outfielder, which I think is obviously a huge improvement. You get Marcelo Zuna over Nick Markakis every day. Yes, Nick Markakis has been pretty decent for the Braves over the last couple years, but Marcelo Zuna is a far superior player than Nick Markakis is at the age that he's at right now. One year, 18 million. Like, this is, oh, it's such a good move. It's such a good move. Nobody saw it coming. And the Braves, they swoop in and they get Marcelo Zuna. Now, let's talk about Ozuna and the impact that he's going to make on this Braves lineup. Like I said, you're already adding him to Ronald Acuna, Ozzy Albies, Freddie Freeman. So last year was Ozuna's second season in St. Louis and definitely the better of the two that he had had. Of course, he broke out in Miami, but let me just give you a breakdown on his numbers. Last year in 2019, he hit 29 homers, 23 doubles, and a triple to give him 89 RBIs, stealing a career high 12 bases, kind of out of nowhere. Career low in batting average at 241, a 328 on base with a 472 slugging and 800 OPS. This coming off of season 2018, where he had a 758 OPS, but then coming off of 2017 with Miami, where he really went off, 924 OPS, 37 homers, 30 doubles, 124 RBIs. That was a crazy season. Ozuna's average dropped a lot last year, and that's probably the most concerning thing, but really, batting average isn't that important, especially when you hit home runs. You can get on base. He walked 60 times last year, and I think putting him in a more hitter-friendly park in Atlanta, SunTrust, or what's it called now, Truist Park, I think it's just like, it's a great improvement for him. That lineup in Atlanta is definitely better than the lineup he had in St. Louis. He's got more protection around him, more guys you'd rather not pitch to than Marcelo Zuna, like he's definitely not the best bat there. And you almost make up for losing Josh Donaldson at third base by getting Marcelo Zuna, by putting his bat in the lineup. I don't think he's as good of a hitter as Josh Donaldson's gonna be or was, but you kind of replace that bat in a way without really having to go crazy. Again, one year, 18 million. Like such a smart deal. Great job by the Braves front office. They've done a fantastic job this offseason. This only adds on to the additions that they made. Adding Cole Hamels, adding Will Smith in the bullpen, re-signing Chris Martin, Melanson's there, Shane Green's there. This is going to be a very scary team. I had them as my favorite already to be in the World Series for 2020 and my way too early predictions. Grabbing Marcelo Zuna only further solidifies that I think they are the best team in the National League. I am scared as a Mets fan. I don't like this one bit. As mentioned earlier, we also got the results from the 2020 Baseball Hall of Fame ballot and of course the obvious one, Derek Jeter. We knew he was getting in. It was just a matter of whether or not he was going to be unanimous, getting those 100% votes or if someone was going to leave him off. Of course someone did leave him off. He missed out on being unanimous by one vote. So like 396 out of 397, I believe. I think he 
should have been unanimous to me in my eyes. He's a guaranteed Hall of Famer first ballot, no doubt about it. But in all honesty, it really doesn't matter him not getting 100%. It's not like you get a special room in the Hall of Fame. It's not like they put it on your plaque. Some of the greatest players of all time haven't been unanimous. The only guy actually in history was Mariano Rivera. So yes, Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Tom Seaver, Ken Griffey, all these guys, they didn't get 100%. Derek Jeter not getting 100% is not the end of the world. He was in first ballot. That's all that matters in my opinion. Definitely deserves it. One of the best players that I got to watch play during my lifetime. As much as I hate the Yankees, can't really hate Derek Jeter. He was a class act, did everything the right way, just went about his business and all he wanted to do was win. Plus, I mean, the guy like outside of being the Marlins president, making some terrible decisions there, who doesn't want to be Derek Jeter? King of New York for like 20 years. Barry's Hannah Jeter now and she's pff, a smoke. Well done, Derek Jeter on a fantastic life. And now you're a Hall of Famer where you deserve to be. The other player that got in was Larry Walker. And this one came down pretty much to the final few votes because it was his 10th year on the ballot. You only get 10 years and after that, it's up to the Veterans Committee, but he got in. Larry Walker received 304 votes, which gave him 76.6% of the total votes, which gets him into the Hall of Fame because of course you need a minimum of 75%. He literally got in by six votes. It was that close. And I got to say, I'm happy for this guy. Originally, when he first touched the ballot, I didn't think he was a Hall of Famer. I'd admit myself, I had a little bit of that Coors bias thinking that I ah, played in Coors. He's not that good of a hitter. But when you actually look at his numbers, Larry Walker is without a doubt a Hall of Famer. The fact that it was actually even this close is a little bit silly. Yes, he might not have 3,000 hits. Yes, he might not have 500 home runs. But for the time span that he played and the numbers that he put up, it's actually quite unbelievable how good of a player he was. Five-tool athlete, could steal bases, cannon of an arm, great glove, hit for power, hit for average. He was a complete player and it's about time he got that recognition because for the last nine years, this dude has been sweating it out, seeing if he's making the Baseball Hall of Fame. He didn't even think he was going to make it today. He put out a tweet earlier saying like, yeah, I think I'm just going to miss out on it. But luckily for us, for the Baseball Hall of Fame, for the game of baseball, Larry Walker gets put into the Hall of Fame where he deserves. The dude is one of the better outfielders of the 90s and 2000s. Yes, he had some of his best years in Coors, and of course, the baseball is played a little bit different over there. But it doesn't matter. Take him out of Coors, put him anywhere, any stadium in Major League Baseball. The guy is a class hitter and very much deserved to be in there. Shout out to Foolish Baseball. I truly believe that this guy had a huge impact on Larry Walker making it to the Hall of Fame. If you haven't seen his video on Larry Walker, go check it out. It's fantastic. He convinced me that he was a Hall of Famer because I was on the other side originally. It has a lot of views. So if you think that this guy didn't have an influence on Larry Walker making it to the Hall of Fame, you're wrong. Shout out to Foolish Baseball. Larry Walker should be inviting you to the Hall of Fame ceremony because you definitely helped him out there. Kurt Schilling came really close. He had 70%, so you can expect next year in a much weaker ballot, even though this year was kind of weak to begin with. But Kurt Schilling's going to make it next year. He was very close. The two that disappoint me the most are Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens not really making up a lot of ground. They gained about 1 or 2% each. Clemens got 61%. Bonds was at 60.7. These guys, in my eyes, are without a doubt Hall of Famers, in my opinion. Yes, you have the steroid allegations. They probably took steroids. It looks like it's pretty much obvious, but that doesn't make them a better player necessarily. These guys were the best of the best. Barry Bonds, best hitter of all time. Roger Clemens, best pitcher of all time, in my opinion. I think they need to be in the Hall of Fame. What they did was wrong. You want to put an asterisk next to their name? I don't care, but to me, those guys need to be in there, and I hate Roger Clemens. Probably my least favorite player of all time. I don't want to see him in there, but I think for the game of baseball, it's right to put him in there. Same thing with Barry Bonds. I'm a fan of him, though. He was a beast. The other interesting names to look at was Omar Vizquel got 52.6%. Omar Vizquel's not a Hall of Famer in my opinion. A great fielder. But me and my friends were talking about this the other day and it was like, would you take Troy Tulowitzki and the 10 years of injury ridden stuff with him or Omar Vizquel? The obvious answer is Troy Tulowitzki and he's not a Hall of Famer. Omar Vizquel's not a Hall of Famer. That's too many votes in my opinion. Scott Rowland got a big bump. He's up to 35.3. Again, in my eyes, not a Hall of Famer, but some people feel like he is. Billy Wagner got an increase in his percentage, which is right. This guy should be a Hall of Famer. Arguably one of the best left-handed relievers in baseball history. Has the highest K per nine in Major League Baseball history. He's also up there for like the lowest whip of all time. Like this guy was an absolute stud. He got overshadowed by guys like Mariano, like Eric Gagne, like Trevor Hoffman, because he wasn't necessarily the best closer in baseball, but you also had some crazy good names above you. Billy Wagner deserves to be in there. He'll start to get more votes as the year go on. The guy's falling off the ballot, which I was surprised about. Paul Canerco, don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but I thought he'd stick around one more year. Giambi, Soriano, Chavez, Lee, Adam Dunn, Brad Penny, Raul Ibanez, and JJ Putz, all gone. And then of course, there's a bunch of guys who received no votes, like Jose Valverde. So I think the two guys that got in definitely deserved it. I think they're the right picks. I would have liked to see more, but that doesn't seem like it's going to happen for a little bit longer. We're not going to see Bonds and Clemens get in until at least their 10th year, in my opinion. And then I just want to briefly talk about the Toronto Blue Jays jersey because, oh my God, winners, best jerseys in baseball. I think I said the Texas Rangers powder blues were the best, yet no, the Toronto Blue Jay powder blues, they win it all. Bo Bichette, Vlad Jr., Kevin Biggio, they look great in them. The Toronto Blue Jay powder blue jerseys are disgustingly nice. It's them and the Padres and then the Rangers powder blues, like I said. Just like, uh, I'm, I'm going to need one of those. Maybe a little 
Flo Bichette in that light blue because that is just so nice. I didn't have time to make a whole video on it because I can't talk about just one jersey really for 10 minutes, but I figured I'd sprinkle it in here because I need to bring it up. It's so crazy nice. So that's pretty much all the news that's been going on in baseball the last few days. I'd love to know what you guys think about the Ozuna signing, the Hall of Fame bout, the Blue Jays jerseys, anything going on in baseball down in the comment section below. Let me know down there. Remember to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it as well as subscribe to the channel if you have not yet already. Remember you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNickMark. Links in the description. Otherwise, gonna wrap up the video there. You guys know the drill. YouTube recommends you watch this video as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll catch you guys all tomorrow for an absolute banger. You're not gonna wanna miss it. See you tomorrow. Bye.